you'll know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Welcome back to the Tea Party Power Hour. My name is Mark Galar. My guest today is Miss Catherine Engelbrecht. She's a wife, a mother, a business owner, a native Texan, and a lifelong practitioner of common sense, which means she can't be a Democrat. Uh, she is first and foremost the co-founder of True the Vote, an organization that attempts to maintain voter integrity throughout the United States. You probably will recognize her from one of her many appearances to promote the movie 2000 Mules. Catherine, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I can't even begin to tell you how impressed I am with what you and Greg have done. You've proven to the world that we have a voter integrity issue and anyone who doesn't believe that, I think, is just intentionally looking the other way and not wanting to see it. But let me ask you one question about you before we dive into some questions here and some of these attacks that have uh, gone against tr True the Vote and 2,000 Mules. How did you get into this? I mean, no one wakes up one day and just decides, I'm going to start an organization to ensure voter integrity. <laughs> I mean, how does that, how does that happen? Definitely not. No, it was it was quite by accident. Look, I have, uh, I mean, I said for years, I have, uh, you know, I have no previous political experience, I guess, at this point, just so seeing as how I've been in this since 2009, I can no longer say I'm a newbie. But certainly, uh, when I started, um, it, it was, it was simply because there were not enough volunteers to work at the polls in our local elections and so a small group just born of the tea party movement had come together to say what you know what can we do because you know we were going to rallies that's great but the passion has to translate into action so what's something that we can do in our community that is you know a, a way to check the box on the good citizenship checklist and, and working in the elections was one and never in my wildest imagination was it going to ever evolve into anything more than just a volunteer effort to work at the elections. But what happened was that at those, at that very first election cycle, those of us that worked saw, you know, most of us had great experiences, which is what we should all hope for. But there were enough of us that came back together uh, in the after, in the aftermath of the, of the process and said, man, there were some really screwy things that occurred. And we compared notes and realized that Again, um, you know, looking at this still just, you know, with, with the eyes of innocence, we thought, well, there, there seems to be some fundamental breakdowns of the, of the process, particularly in the area of inaccuracies in the voter rolls. So why don't we take a closer look at that and, and see if we can come up with something that would help the county, uh, and then we'll move on to other, to other projects. And so uh, we... Having having seen problems at the polls, we began a research into the into those problems. Recognized that in fact the voter rolls were uh, not only inaccurate to a worrisome degree, but but moreover at that point were actively being um, I would say assaulted by a, a a group that had come into town that was making claims of registering hundreds of thousands of people in a very short period of time and. Our follow-up was uh, through open records uh, uncovered that that while they were submitting those those registrations, they were not accurate registrations and shouldn't be entered into the voter rolls, and that set off a. Uh, it's a longer story for a different day, but the the county that we were working in called a press conference. That press conference made national news, and it was like a dog whistle had been sounded to crush through the vote. And uh, you know, it's it's been it's it's been an adventure ever since. 
that's an incredible story and i love the fact that it started that way because some of the best things in life uh start by accident and it sounds like in a way that's that's kind of what happened at least in terms of of how it took off now i want to get right into 2000 mules because i was watching the night that the uh, the debut uh, occurred and the response from the left was almost immediate it was vicious and they came out with all kinds of things that they were saying about it was just false there was no truth to it the the uh the gps tracking information that or that you guys analyzed wasn't accurate enough to determine whether or not these mules were actually going by these uh, drop-off boxes uh, what was your initial response to the enormous amount of criticism that 2,000 and Mules received uh, from the media and from the left and even a few people on the right uh, in the early going? I expected it. You know, I mean, I'm, we're no stranger to, um, you know, the the presentation of inconvenient truths that uh, elements on both the left and the right work overtime to, to bury and cover up and you know, what comes to mind, although it's probably not the best mental picture, but is from, um, you know, the, the picture of, uh, of, oh gosh, now I've lost the name of the movie, but it's oh, Madagascar. Madagascar, a, a cartoon Pixar movie where, where they have the famous penguins that, that just kind of stand together in a little band and say, just smile and wave, boys, smile and wave. Well, that's how I feel, you know, that's how I feel about the, the groups that, that stand against us routinely on both the left and the right and saying, you know, just keep saying there's nothing to see, keep saying that True the Vote doesn't know what it's talking about. And and so I, I take it all with with a bit of a grain of salt. I don't read I don't read our press. Um, I try to respond uh, faithfully to uh, journalists who actually reach out, which is very few. Um, most just write what they're going to write. But, you know, the, the, the cognitive dissonance that it takes to, to look at our work relative to geospatial tracking, where we brought in expert analysts to, to deduce a, a, a subset of the population that, that was operating in, in ways that could only be, be tied to the stopping at, at drop boxes because we had geofenced around drop boxes. We can get into that in whatever level of depth you choose. But the same the same level of analysts that work routinely with with federal law enforcement, same people, by by the way, um, to in 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 our setting, you know, couldn't be trusted. But but the same types of data and some of the same people were being employed by f federal law enforcement in J6, which seems to have had, you know, no holds barred in, in making their, you know, their arrests based on, based on tracking of cell phones. The, the fact is that cell phone data is, is used every day by law enforcement and, and, and far more than law enforcement. I mean, we're being tracked by all manner of interested parties, including the government in ways that would shock and horrify the average American. It's a it's a true fact that we are we are we are the product and we are being tracked. What made us unique is that we were bold enough to put an awful lot of resources and time into an investigation that we didn't talk about publicly until we knew that we had the goods. Um, and it took it took you know, these elements, the smile and wave elements that there's nothing to see here, maintain the status quo uh, at all costs, um, took them by, by such shock that they overreacted. And, and that is, I believe, why you saw both the, the, the overwhelming negativity, but also overwhelming support. I mean, it, it, it was really sort of cut down the middle I, in, in many respects. And, um, you know, and, and all, I, all I can tell you is, the data is accurate. The findings were true. Um, you know, it was never our intention to make a movie. In fact, so many things had to go wrong for the movie to be made. We we had intended only to present everything to law enforcement and let them do do their their investigations. Um, you know, we we could only do so much with the data. Uh, it was to them to have the data de-anonymized and and do the things that they routinely do 
in investigations, uh, but that in this case they didn't do because it didn't serve, you know, the, the propaganda narrative of, you know, it's all a lie and, you know, there's no problem. Uh, we, we blew a hole in that and they had to work overtime to try to um, discredit us so that the furtherance of those investigations would never see the light of day. And they did a, they did a, a, an effective job, but they didn't stop us from making a movie. And waking up a lot of Americans along the you, way. You mentioned the propaganda uh, against you. I can't even imagine what it would be like to turn on the television or a computer and see the Attorney General of the United States or the former Attorney General of the United States making fun of credible work. What I'd like to do is play mm -hmm. this clip from Bill Barr. In this clip, he makes three claims and then I want to have you address each one of those claims because I, I don't know that it's been done exactly like this before. And frankly, sure. when we're done here, I'd like to package it up and I'm going to send it out to about 200 journalists. So let's, uh, let's begin by letting you hear a clip of Bill Barr's opinion of 2,000 Mules. You can hear in this clip he actually laughs about the movie, which I mm -hmm. didn't think there was anything funny in that movie at all. But here we go. My opinion then and my opinion now is that uh, the election was not stolen by fraud. And uh, I haven't seen anything since the election that changes my mind on that, including the 2000 Mules movie. <laughs> well, maybe you can uh, assess that 2000 Mules and people are talking about that. Well, I mean, just in a nutshell, you know, I just think that the GBI was unimpressed with it. And I was similarly unimpressed with it because I think if you because uh, I was holding my fire on that to see what the photographic evidence was, because I thought, well, hell, if they have a lot of photographs of the same person dumping a lot of ballots in different boxes, you know, that's hard to explain. Um, so I wanted to see what the photographic evidence was. But the uh, cell phone data is, is singularly unimpressive. I mean, it basically, if you take two million uh, cell phones and, and figure out where they are physically in a big city like Atlanta or wherever, just by definition, you're going to find many hundreds of them have passed by and spent time in the vicinity of these boxes. And the premise that, if, you know, if you go by a box, you know, five boxes or whatever it was, you know, that that's a, a mule is just un, indefensible. It, 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 by definition, you're going to have a lot of hundreds of this. I mean, one, I saw one contractor said, we figured out that our truck alone would account for six uh, cell phone signals. Uh, this was a, you know, a, 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 some kind of contractor. And, you know, our route would take us by these things on a regular basis. So I, I but then you know, when the movie came out, uh, you know, I think the photographic evidence in it was completely lack. I mean, it was, there was a little bit of it, but it was lacking, you know, it didn't, it didn't establish widespread uh, illegal, um, Harvesting. The other thing is people don't understand is that uh, it's not clear that even if you can show harvesting that that changes the the results of the election. You, you're not the courts are not going to throw out votes uh, and then figure out you know, what votes were harvested and throw them out. It's still the burden on the challenging party to show that illegal votes were cast. Votes were the result of undue influence or bribes or, or there was really, you know, the person was non compass mentis. Uh, but absent that evidence, I, don't, I just didn't see courts throwing out votes anyway. Okay, well, there you go. Bill Barr basically making three claims in there. Let's take the photographic evidence thing first. One of the things Bill Barr said is that he was looking for seeing the same people dropping off stacks of ballots at a uh, drop box and he didn't essentially see that. Personally, I was bothered by the fact that people were wearing latex gloves and taking pictures of themselves doing it, but <laughs> apparently Bill Barr didn't even notice that. But let's get back to why we don't see pictures of the same people over and over dropping off ballots at one particular ballot box or maybe the same person going to 25, 26 ballot boxes and dropping off ballots. Why didn't that videographic evidence ever 
materialize, ever manifest? Well, it it has manifested and, 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 and it does exist. It just wasn't put in the movie because the movie had a requirement for being able to see video on a big screen. Most of the, you know, I mean, if you, if you if you lost the images because they were overly pixelated, or as most of the video, unfortunately, was uh, was 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 um, was uh, defined or was 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 produced, um, the the cameras themselves were you know, not pointed directly at the drop boxes, pointed at the ground. Um, a lot of the mules were, or people that were repeatedly, repeatedly, there's so many things I want to take apart in what, what the, the clip that was just played, but um, people that were repeatedly going to these drop boxes, they didn't go during the day, they went at night. And so if you didn't have good lighting or if the camera wasn't well positioned, you just saw shadowy figures. The only thing that tied them was cell phone pings. And so a lot of that is is expected inside of you know a, a, a proper law enforcement regulated um, investigation, but it doesn't sort of you know play well on the big screen. And so what Dinesh and we had no, I mean we we made available the files that we had at the time, which was which is a whole nother level of of um, of discussion because getting the video itself was was. The, the terrific challenge but that you know that aside we had hundreds and hundreds of clips the ones that that Dinesh and his team chose were the ones that you could that would tell a story on the screen um you know were they the ones we would have chosen probably not but but it's very important to be able I mean we're as America we're, we're sort of very spoiled to you know wanting to see the full color spread and um the that's what that's what they did, um, but I, but it's it's but to take what Bill Barr said in context, let me tell you it, it, our side of that story. Okay? okay, Bill Barr, as head of the Department of Justice, is also therefore head of the FBI. We were working with his FBI agents throughout this process because we had also come into contact with um, what we what we perceive to be immediately a national security threat uh, through through the um, finding of a, of a software election software provider called conic that was tightly affiliated with the the Chinese Communist Party and in fact was storing American election data in China and running their operations from China and providing the same services that they were ostensibly providing here in the States to the People's Congress of China. You couldn't get, you know, you storing the information on the same servers. All of that to say, we were working with the FBI on that matter. And because it was happening simultaneously to our work with the geospatial evidence, what we what we 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 read the the FBI in. We were working with two special agents uh, of the intelligence community. That their job is to surface data and then and then um, provide that data to the appropriate um, extended parties. So in our case, because we did we did five we we researched the 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 patterns of geospatial traffic in five jurisdictions. We worked with these FBI agents to set up data hubs in the in the five areas because our thought was and very naively but our thought was you know all manner of, of law enforcement clearly is going to want this we were very um concerned about the loss of chain of custody and you know if it just became us just sending out these massive data sets just all over the place we would lose control of 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 the potentially the versioning of those sets we just we didn't want to leave anything to chance and so we asked the FBI, again, Bill Barr's oversight, right? We asked them, would you help us, may help us make introductions to the various jurisdictions. We will place the primary data sets with the FBI office uh, in these various regions because they all had their offices there. And then the appropriate 
uh, law enforcement can come and and you can work with them or the FBI can work with them to make sure that the chain of custody is never broken. The metadata all stays intact for what we believe to be, uh, if if seen to its fullest, a, a full, a, a f- I mean, it would have been, you talk about, you know, the, the word RICO is thrown away, thrown around very liberally now um, about, you know, uh, collusive efforts. Um, that's what we thought we were looking at, still believe what we were looking at in, in the data. All this to say, Bill Barr also talks about the GBI being unimpressed. Well, he's, even as he is describing what he saw, um, what what I know from that is he's he's not being an honest broker in his description of events because it was the FBI that provided that data to the GBI the FBI provided it because they believed that that it was um let's just say was interesting enough to warrant a full investigation and i have hard copy from the FBI saying as much um, talking about it in terms of this is the smoking gun. So when we provided that data to the FBI to provide it to the GBI, the GBI refused to even, when we made our initial presentation to the GBI in the first quarter of 2021, I think it was uh, mid-March, um, they refused to even look at the data I mean, we provided sort of a, an, you know, an overview, but a visual overview, but, but the actual nuts and bolts that was contained in a massive data set, they wouldn't even look at it until the following late September, early October. For all of those months in between, they were bobbing and weaving and ducking us saying, you know, we don't have jurisdiction. We can't really do anything with this. They would not After we made that first presentation, they wanted nothing to do with it. The only reason that they finally looked at the data was to begin this this drumbeat of discreditation discreditation of us um, by, I mean, there's there's so many levels to this story, and I I, I want to not veer too far away from your original question of of Bill Barr um, and his comments, but the idea, I mean, the, the, we never presented the GBI with photographic evidence. We never even got that far. So for Bill Barr to say, I, I took a look at the photographic evidence means I went to see the movie and the movie didn't show me anything. So it must all be, you know, it, it must all be smoke and mirrors rather than treating this with the appropriate level of concern you know, it, it can't go without saying that Bill Barr and his organization spent that year, a 2020, over a hundred million dollars in geospatial data aggregation bought from a company called Ventel. I know exactly who they work with and exactly how they do it. I know exactly how exacting that data can be. Bill Barr and the FBI used that data in, in preparation for, and I do mean preparation for January 6th. That is how they were able to move to indictments, even though he was no longer the attorney general at that point, the Department of Justice was able to move to indictments in the J6 uh, events within days because they already had the geospatial data worked up, spun up, patterned out. And so for him to just sort of kick this all to the curb as laughable is is – I believe, um, I, I, I just, knowing what I know about how it really works is uh, troubling to say the very least. Let's jump into those other two accusations and what you just said leads right into it. You know, he had said that the geospatial data wasn't impressive and then went as far as to give an example of some type of contractor we don't know what it was. Was it a plumbing contractor? Was it an electrical contractor? We don't know. But apparently he took a lot of stock in what these people had to say when they said that six of those mules could have been their contract trucks just driving by those ballot boxes. Mm-hmm. And, of course, one of the things we heard from the left right away is, oh, that's just people driving home from work. Well, right. what I understand, right. and ironically I had a guest on a few weeks ago, 
who was a CPA who audited the 2020 uh, election, and he was pointing out that you guys actually used three data sets, which allowed your data to be much more accurate than it would have been if you'd only been using one, and that your data was accurate to within, I think he said about 33 inches ballpark. Is that close? So if that's the case, this isn't people driving home from work. This isn't, as Bill Barr implied, you know, a bunch of contract workers who happen to drive the same route every day. You would actually yeah. have to get out of your car and walk over to those drop boxes unless those drop boxes were hanging off the curb into the street. <laughs> right. So I, I, you know, I feel, I feel it necessary to say that, you know, we, as we established early on in this, I started True the Vote in 2009. When we took on this project uh, in 2020, and we started this in December of 2020, uh, with an, for initially with an eye towards only the runoff that was coming up in Georgia. So we began in, based upon some information that had been given to us from an, from an informant, we began in, in, both, in both Georgia and in Arizona, we began to pattern out looking at Georgia first to see if, if what we were being told actually uh, was visible in data. And then once we realized that it was, that's when we started looking back. So we, we had sort of a control set in 2021, then looking back into 2020. But I say all of that to, to make this point. The risk that we took in doing this project and bringing it forward, recognizing fully what was going to happen, that we would be put through the proverbial you know meat grinder uh, because it doesn't fit the narrative that it was all a big lie. So we knew that we were going to get hit and hit hard. But the thought that I would put my reputation out on data like this, if 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 my parameters for for patterning were just uh, oh cars driving by drop boxes, well look how many cars drive by drop boxes. That mu- they must be mules. Oh boy, I mean just that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, the, just the thought that, that, that we would be so um, uh, careless in the processing. So, so dialing it back just a bit, the data that was used was bought from three different vendors. And, and because all vendors uh, have different strengths or, or the vendor set that, that is in this space have different strengths. And so a blend of those gives you um, the ability to, to weigh out certain variables and produce them the, the uh, sort of an optimized data set the data that we relied upon what is is called ad key data and and that is the data that is 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 harvested from the apps on your phone whether or not you turn off your you know you have your privacy settings dialed up or you have your location services off all your apps on your phone particularly those that are free. If an app is free, you are the product. And it is sending up signals about your whereabouts every few seconds. And those data elements include the timestamp, the lat long of wherever you are, and the elevation of the phone. So in other words, I'm, I'm getting a variable in the data that tells me whether I'm on the ground floor or if I'm on the 10th floor of a building. Now with those elements, you can triangulate around velocity because you have time and you have the lat long. And so once you build out all of those algorithms and you begin to, to iterate the data and you cycle it through again and again and again, you begin a sift. So, so if you take that, those types of, um, of exacting data points and then the geofence, which we physically went and measured around the drop boxes to come up with accurate lat long pinpoints. Digit, so you build sort of a digital fence around the drop box and you are accurate in saying they weren't just hanging off the side of the road. You had to drive to these drop boxes. Um, and then you can introduce things like velocity and time. Um, what you end up with is as you're going through the data, you you begin to develop patterns of what the population, just writ large, what the population during the early election typically looked like. And then as you iterate and iterate and iterate, you get to a place where there is a subset that behaves very differently. And what was not shown in the movie were our quality control processes that, that not only took into consideration 
the number of times that they were going to drop boxes, but the times in which they were going to drop boxes, which was typically between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Doesn't make it illegal, just makes it unusual. And, the, and then the, the, the cherry on the top was that these phones did not, none of, the, none of the phones in our study behaved the same way in the months before or after the early election. They only behaved in that way during the early election. Now, unfortunately, that whole line of reasoning was not included in the movie, but it was included in everything that we tried to provide to law enforcement, certainly in what we shared with the FBI, but intentionally buried because it did not fit their narrative. And we'll be right back with Catherine Engelbrecht of True the Vote right after these messages. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday for the ones who get it done the most important part is the one you need now and the best partner is the one who can deliver that's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust granger because we have professional grade supplies for every industry even hard to find products and we have same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders but most importantly we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running call click granger.com or just stop by granger for the ones who get it done at Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. What was the the number of inches away from a drop box that someone had to be in order to be counted as a mule? I mean, was it 33 inches the way one person implied? If they got within six feet of one, as you determined what was and what was not a mule, how close did they have to come? What I'm trying to establish here is that they weren't in their car in the middle of the street. They had to be close to that drop box. I'm trying to find out how close. Uh, it, it, and it depends, and there's so many dependencies. It depends upon uh, the positioning of the drop box. It depends, and then we would draw an ellipse around the drop box. It, 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 you had to go into that ellipse. And so the, you know, and if you, if you think about, you know, pings going off every few seconds and different, different apps giving different pings, a ping had to occur within that ellipse. And that ellipse was typically within you know, a, a few feet of circumference, the circumference uh, around the around the drop box. So we we likely missed far more than we saw. Additionally, they had to go repeatedly. Uh, in in Atlanta, for example, it was a minimum of ten times. And and you think about the 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 pings and the nature of the pings. And by the way, they had to go to to at least I think in Atlanta, from memory, five or more NGOs, which was a the data element that came up later on so they had to meet all of these criteria for us to really pattern them out and and the, the again when you introduce velocity and time a drive-by could not have occurred in these drop these drop boxes were not drive-by drop boxes you had to park and walk and and so unless you took your phone with you we likely missed you or we likely missed the number of times that 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 a person might have gone we you know <laughs> we got the data to a point that any law enforcement, and we have talked to many who were on the outside looking in of, of, of the times in which we were providing data and, and were providing it in, you know, in ways that they couldn't touch. It was outside of their jurisdictional capacity to work with, but clearly, clearly thought that there was a reasonable cause to, to look more deeply. And, he know. also said that just because ballots were harvested doesn't mean they're illegal. Some states allow harvesting, some states don't. Of the swing states you looked at, did they all allow harvesting? 
Could these be legal ballots uh, no. that were harvesting that were harvested? Well, the, the, broad, the broad answer to that is is no. Harvesting in the places where we looked was not legal. Now you do have variances of that in Michigan. It was because of the back and forth that, that, you know, we think back to 2020, how quickly laws were changing and standards were changing. There were two weeks during which um, harvesting was made legal and then made illegal again. So there are all kinds of variables, but the, the, the key to this was, was, you know, in a perfect world, you would have had the video to be able to match directly to the cell phone data. So you could have seen for yourselves, unfortunately, the video didn't exist in states like Michigan, where they, you know, told the citizenry that um, there was, you know, every 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 camera was trained on these drop boxes. I mean, I, there there were just a handful of drop boxes that had video cameras. Wisconsin, um, none. Uh, Philadelphia, the county in Pennsylvania. If it's there, they still haven't given it to us. Uh, and so Georgia was the was the best example, and even it had, you know, fifteen percent of of the video that uh, that out of what should have been available, we got about fifteen percent, and even that, most of it was not usable. So anyway, uh, you know, there's 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 so many um, there, there's so many considerations inside of these measurements and inside of the the ways in which we deduced to the to the the targets that we began to take closer look at looks at but the fact of the matter is this the data depending upon how deeply you want to drill down and how um, how how much data you have and and other variables like apps and and what apps were on the the the, the phones in question um, you can get down to centimeters of accuracy. The government can get down to centimeters of accuracy. That technology exists without question. If you think about just how accurate Uber can be in a free app, and then think about what paid professionals can do, and it's there's there's no doubt. I'm told that the government can tell whether a coin is heads up or tails up from satellites in space, so... <laughs> Absolutely true. They can tell you what color your eyes are. Absolutely true. Wow. Well, let's, uh, just looking at Bill Barr's claims, he said there was no photographic evidence of the same people going back over and over again. You're telling me that data does, that, that, that video, videographic evidence does exist. It just wasn't in the movie. Have you guys released that? We've not. Um, Would you cons- for a variety of reasons. Okay, I was going to ask if you considered. Yeah, for a variety of reasons. Yeah, for for a variety of re- absolutely. And in fact, we have a, a website called Open Inc. Open Inc. That ultimately, at some point, this video will make it. Now, right now, we're in a lawsuit um, over all of this, of course, to no one's great surprise. And and so, you know, we've got to be very cautious about how we put things out, and and. Um, and, and then prepare for the backlash of, oh well, you can't you can't see that person's face, and you can't, you know, you that person only cuts through the corner of the video, and and, and the marrying up of, of the video and the data. It, this is this is really it's the work, of, of law enforcement professionals. It's it it will not play well to the public because they want to see full color, full face. I see that guy here, here, and here. And unfortunately, because of the quality of the video, it's it it doesn't scratch that itch. I understand. I mean, are this, you know. I totally get it, but that was like the number one criticism is I was out on social media defending True the Vote, mm-hmm. defending 2,000 Mules. People were like, well, where's that video? I would say if there's video that you have that you can eventually release where you've got the person where you can just tell it's somebody wearing the exact same clothes and we can sync it up with the cell phone data, and you see the same person going to numerous drop boxes wearing the same clothes. Sometimes you can make out their face, sometimes you can't. That has to be released because that's going to take the left's number one criticism and toss it away. Now, I think you did a great job destroying Bill Burr's comment that you know somebody could have been, could have been contractors driving by, people driving home on the way from work, and as for the harvesting, that was just a flat-out lie that just because they were harvested, mm-hmm. they weren't illegal. Because in some of the places, in fact, it sounds like most of the places that you looked at, harvesting was illegal. So for Bill Barr to say that, especially as the attorney general, was just a flat-out 
lie. But I don't want to end this on an angry note yelling at Bill Barr. I want to end it on a positive note because True the Vote is doing some absolutely great work. I'm extremely proud of what you and Greg have done. You've even gone to jail over this because you wouldn't release a source that you should have never been asked to release in the first place. And so I want to give you a chance to tell people very quickly, because I know we're out of time, how they can get involved with True the Vote, either by making a donation, showing up at the polls on Election Day. What can people do? I know you've got some big stuff coming. I saw your podcast last night with the cats. And uh, (laughs) I've got one sitting on my desk right now. So the, (laughs) the bottom line is, what can people do who want to get behind you and help you, whether it's financially or through physical hours donated tell people how they can get involved with true the vote sure you can go to truthevote.org um you can certainly follow us on socials we're you know at true the vote on uh, just about every platform um our website is is in the midst of, of, of a coming overhaul that will have a very different look and feel uh, and will include for the first time in a long time some opportunities to to work with us in volunteer capacities on the ground. Look, the, the fact is we've been on, you know, we've been on defense for a long time with the things that we presented in 2020. And we're still have, you know, a handful and, and then some of lawsuits that we're fighting. It is all an attempt to silence dissent, to, to take out anybody that, that may have an influential voice before 2024 so that the, the status quo big lie set uh, can uh, can can run the table, uh, thinking they can run it in the same way they did in 2020, and the American people are just fed up and aren't going to have it. So we invite anybody that is is interested in honest elections to to just sign up. I mean, frankly, just go to our website and sign up. We send out a weekly newsletter, and that's going to be the best place to find to keep to be kept apprised of what we've got going on. Just voting is no longer enough. We need to be able to make sure that there is no polling place in our local elections left unmanned, that we have people just pouring out ready to volunteer locally. And if we do that, so much can be changed for the better so quickly. The, the problems that we face now are, are largely due to the fact that, that America has just sort of checked out of the process and we've just assumed that it's it's going to be managed and well managed and and I think 2020 if nothing else showed that there are a lot of questions about the accuracy of that process and and honest eyes and ears serving will go a long way to shoring up those deficiencies so being being prepared to serve in 2024 and projects that we have coming up particularly in the space of voter registration and engagement will, will go a long way do you think the mules will be back in 2024 minus their cell phones um, look, I think there are always bad actors. The the the, the mules were uh, a phenomenon made possible by this push towards mass mail out of ballots and unregulated uh, ballot drop boxes. Thankfully, many states have gotten rid of those ballot drop boxes or moved them inside or or done things to to limit the um, the the exploit the exploitive potential. So. Will they be back? Um, I, I, they're going to be back with a vengeance. Will the, will the tactic be the same? I don't know. But what I do know is that there are millions more Americans now alert and and, and willing to serve than there were in 2020. And for that, um, I, I think we have every reason to be hopeful that, that good will win the day. And those Americans are alert because of the good work that you and Greg are doing at True the Vote. Catherine, it's been an honor having you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and remind you that if you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter, just text the word T, that's T-E-A, as in taxed enough already, to 44144. Once again, that's T, -T T-E-A, to 44144. I also want to remind you that Christmas will be here before you know it, And at the TeaPartyPowerHour.com, we have a great selection of Donald Trump coins. Just go to TeaPartyPowerHour.com, click on the Trump Coins tab, and start taking a look at these beautiful silver coins that would be the perfect stocking stuffer for the Trump supporter on your list. 
You've been listening to the Tea Party Power Hour with Mark Gillar. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday monetizing digital services since 2004 boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone awg where innovation meets monetization